Well, Kazampla, and welcome to our Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program. I'm Chirku once again back with the program, our top stories this week. Their Majesties on royal tours encouraging resilience among people as the combat against the pandemic continues. Bhutanazangshu 2 hydroelectric project falls short of laborers. And opposition party questions the government on the closure of centenary farmers market. And now let's take a look at the details. His Majesty the King and His Majesty the Fourth Drugalpo are both on royal tours to different parts of southern Bhutan to encourage the people and motivate them to remain resilient as Bhutan continue to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. His Majesty the King arrived in Jomosanka Thursday. His Majesty met with the Dunkak COVID-19 Task Force and other officials. His Majesty is accompanied by His Royal Highness the Gelsap, the Prime Minister and Chairperson of National Council. En route, His Majesty granted audiences to students of Karmaling School and the Dunkak COVID-19 Task Force members in Samdutsholing and visited the Gelsung Centre site in Pemaling. Yesterday in Samdutsongkar, His Majesty granted an audience to the Eastern COVID-19 Task Force and Samdutsongkar Task Force. The team presented an update of the situation and measures in place to address COVID-19 and related issues. His Majesty visited the Tomde control room which monitors border movement as well as Samdozonkar main gate and various points of entries into the country which are being patrolled by armed forces personnel, volunteers from government agencies and desups. His Majesty also visited Motanga which is the identified location for a mini dry pot to hold import goods. His Majesty expressed appreciation to the frontline workers for their hard work and endurance while working to combat COVID-19 successfully and encouraged them to remain alert and resilient. His Majesty the King granted audiences to the task force members of Mongor and Tashigang and met with the students of Sherab's College and Gebijin College of Information Technology earlier this week. His Majesty also granted an audience to the students of Jimmy Namgil Engineering College at Dewatang. His Majesty said to the students that being perceptive about the future and working accordingly will ensure success as individuals and as a nation. His Majesty the Fourth Drukgyalpo visited Sirang and Gilifu as part of a special royal tour. His Majesty is accompanied by His Royal Highness Prince Jigil Ugin Wangchuk. His Majesty the Fourth Drukgyalpo expressed appreciation to the frontline workers for their hard work so far. His Majesty granted audiences to Desups, Armed Forces personnel, COVID-19 Task Force and students of Gilifu High School earlier this week. <laughs> ま、じゃあ、ゲッダシュンのコビ。で、でね、チゲハブレチチ、ミトンソブデチラジャンディベチゲハブレナオイ。ミスレラナブ。あれもだ、え、ミスファラ、え、ジゲガバギ、マトト
While in Gilifu, His Majesty also visited the Gilifu Town Hospital, the identified mini dry pot, and the Gelsum Training Center site in Tarethang. I got some kind of peace in my mind, and and uh, me and my attendant literally cried out of happiness for the first time in my life. Like just, I, I guess, same goes to her also. And for me, it was uh, like seriously a blessing in disguise. In Sirang, His Majesty visited the hospital and town. His Majesty the King and His Majesty the Fourth Drugelpo are both deeply concerned about the impact of COVID-19 on the people, especially those at high-risk areas. COVID-19 the <laughs> BBS News. Addressing the virtual general debate of the 75th session of the United Nations General Assembly last week, Prime Minister Dr. Lotus Srin requested the UN to reset both Sustainable Development Goals format and Developmental Path for a smooth transition from the least developed countries category. The Prime Minister shared that the pandemic has derailed both the efforts in achieving the SDG targets and the LDC graduation track. One, like the rest of the world, will be falling short in achieving the targets of the Sustainable Development Goals, as all 17 SDGs are interconnected and that not a single sector will be spared by the consequences of the pandemic. Bhutan was said to be an early achiever of the SDGs as per the voluntary review report presented to the UN in 2018. Most obvious ones are the goals on health, education and on our economy. If individuals or agencies or even governments are realigning with the realities of COVID-19, shouldn't we revisit the SDGs too? I feel it is time to field a special team to work on a new framework of SDGs, which should encapsulate all elements that will help us walk the path of new normal with more prudence. Just as we see the, the Prime Minister the added, the pandemic SDG derailed format. Bhutan of its LDC graduation track. He solicited support of the United Nations in regaining grip on smooth transition from the LDC category. Bhutan was set to graduate from the category of LDC by 2023. Our current plan was designed to help Bhutan graduate from the LDC category in 2023. Now everything is changed as our focus has shifted to saving lives and livelihood from the challenges posed by this pandemic. We know millions are pushed back into poverty, more have lost their jobs. We would have gone back by decades. Bringing our developmental achievements back on track will not be easy. And for some developing countries, it will be almost irreversible. As part of the address, Prime Minister Dr. Lotus Ring shared Bhutan's COVID-19 story. He highlighted how, under the wise leadership of His Majesty the King, the country's efforts are successful in preventing widespread infection in the community without losing a single life to the virus so far. In this pandemic, as the King spearheads the battle to guard the country from the virus, making sure all Bhutanese, home and abroad, are safe and their spirits uplifted. And then 
we have Her Majesty the Queen so passionately complimenting all His Majesty's effort. Under direct supervision of our King, we have meticulous surveillance system in place, which includes close monitoring of our international entry points and timely institution of 21 days quarantine, which is mandatory for everyone entering the country and fully sponsored by the government. And reliable and pre-testing facilities are also set up across the country. We have a professional health minister leading the team to execute every details of the royal guidance. The Prime Minister also called on the international community to help the developing countries that are disproportionately affected by the pandemic in accessing vaccines as it becomes available. Pubgiem for BBS News. Ten years after the introduction of the human papilloma virus or HPV vaccination program in the country for girls, the health ministry launched the HPV vaccination for boys. The vaccine for boys, according to the ministry, is part of the interventions and programs targeted towards elimination of cervical cancer in Bhutan. Cervical cancer is preventable. However, it is the most common cancer among females. More than 50 cases are detected every year. Although men do not get cervical cancer, they often tend to be carriers and transmit the virus to their partners. Because of this vaccine, uh, it will reduce the circulation of the virus among, um, among the uh, population. And also this will uh, further reduce the prevalences of uh, uh, other cancers related to boys, such as uh, anogenital cancer, genital warts, penile cancer, and oral, oral pharyngeal cancers. All these kind of related cancers will be prevented by this vaccine. This year, due to school closure, the vaccination is being carried out in close consultation with the Education Ministry, Tomde and Zonghak Administration. Starting next year, boys will be vaccinated in schools and health centers. More than 8,000 boys in the country will be provided with the first dose of vaccine in a week from today. The second dose is going to be after six months. For this year, we are targeting around um, 8,114 boys, including the monks, from 11 years to 14 years. Approximately, we have around 6,000 boys in the schools and 54 boys, 12 years old, who are outside of the school. And then, since this vaccine is introducing for the first time in Bhutan for the boys. We are targeting 11 to 14 years boys from monastic institutions. This round of uh, uh, program that we are doing this year uh, is, is funded by the Australian um, uh, Cervical Cancer Foundation uh, with, in collaboration with Mark. And for the next five years, I'm happy to inform the nation that we have already secured uh, funding um, uh, from a very close friend of ours um, um, and, and the, the, the foundation, the Panorama Foundation will fund uh, the whole of the program for the coming five years for boys. La. HPV vaccine is currently provided for girls in 106 countries and for boys in 33 countries. Bhutan, according to the health ministry, is the first country in Southeast Asia to vaccinate boys with HPV vaccines. Singhi Shuzo for BBS News. Following the importance of water resources and its management highlighted in His Majesty's recent address to the nation, the government is working towards incorporating an independent water agency soon. During the recent Mid the Press session, Prime Minister Dr. Lotus Shring said that the current water flagship program will soon transition to a formal independent water agency. Currently, the government is studying all the stakeholders involved in water management. The groundwork on the framework for creating a water agency is already complete. The water agency creation framework groundwork is the the agencies are watching Katibi Zoni in our house. Glen Totongachara, Chugi Tunu Laka Igra Bedu Nogase, Tun Chugi Laka Ibedu Noga, Shin Chugi Laka Ibedu Noga, the Mitobgi Japto Dusuka Gipidu Noga, Anni Jung Tewa, the Sunny Jungi Pana, Kevin Katibi Dugan, Karangachigi, the Chudom Chapsa is a Shunibila. Having an agency to manage water distribution, 
map all water resources for proper management of water and protecting watersheds and sources to sustain water supply is one of the main pledges of the government. And the government allocated 5 billion ngitam for the water flagship program in the 12th five-year plan. It was initially planned for implementation in two phases. However, now the works will be carried out in a single phase. The government will also bring on board the Royal University of Bhutan as an important research and technology service provider. Water governance, water policy, land, malamalo, kecho labi of the law, technology kara tangobe, tani budangaragi shui, tani technology go mediso, the research and innovation go mediso, it must come from a academic institution. The RUB focus the anatsui is shunibi langa. If our dream comes true, it should lead on to having a formal degree on water technology. As per the Population and Housing Census of Bhutan 2017, only about 81% of housing units have reliable water supply during critical hours. About 1.6% of households still needs to travel for at least 30 minutes to the nearest water sources. This is Sring Danduk, BBS News. The Panasang Chutu hydroelectric project already missed two deadlines. And now, as it strides to meet the third one, it is challenged with labor shortage. Many of its workers left for homes in India, and at the same time, fewer Bhutanese turn up to replace them. The project authority is not able to bring in new workers to replace those who left amid the pandemic. As per the latest record, more than 1,200 workers returned to India. In addition, according to the Economic Affairs Minister, over 300 more will be leaving. To fill in the gap, the government floated vacancies for Bhutanese youth. But only 30 applicants came forth to work at the site. <laughs> The <laughs> Earlier this month, the managing director of PHPA2 said there will not be any impact on the construction works if they can bring in new workers on time. Until mid-August, 88% of the works at the project site are complete. The PHPA2 extended its commissioning date to October 2021 after missing out on the revised deadline of December 2018. Works for the 1020 megawatt hydropower project commenced in December 2010. KM for BBS News. Export of boulders, riverbed materials and minerals from uh, Funseling is back on track. It has been over two weeks now since the trade resumed. At the moment, daily, six truckloads of boulders leave the country on an average from the bordering town for Bangladesh. As of now, of over 60 exporters registered in Fensling, only six are involved in transporting boulders outside the country. This is because the rest do not meet the COVID-19 containment protocols. Rixa Construction Company, one of the biggest exporters, carries out the activities without its workers coming in any contact with the drivers transporting the materials. 
Its containment zone has cameras and sensors are installed at the gates to monitor the drivers and for a systematic movement of the trucks. The trucks are sanitized before it reaches the boulder loading sites. The vehicles are also escorted directly to the sites while entering and exiting the town. There are separate clearing agents and customs officials designated at the containment zones. Following a directive from the COVID-19 Task Force for Southern Region, the Bhutan Exporters Association is also developing a containment zone on almost nine acres of land at Tursa. The association expects to complete it in a month's time. Once ready, it will serve as a containment zone for exporters. Following this, the boulder export is expected to resume in full swing. Meanwhile, the mining and dredging companies are also developing containment zones in their areas. Since 15 September, close to half a million US dollars worth of boulders, riverbed materials and minerals were exported from Finsuling. For Sonam Pinchur in Finsuling, it came to BBC News. Speaking on tourism and rural development on World Tourism Day, the Director General of uh, Tourism Council of Bhutan said that Drugnekor will start in a month or two. Drugnekor or Bhutan Pilgrimage is a nationwide pilgrimage tourism product packaged to help both devout domestic and inbound tourists visit endorsed sites. The discussion on tourism and rural development saw an invaluable platform demonstrating the unique ability of tourism to drive economic development and provide opportunities. It was more so about tourism outside of the urban centers to include those communities that are otherwise left behind. The Tourism Council of Bhutan said that Drukhnekor is expected to accelerate domestic tourism in the country. The <laughs> For now, the council plans to initially begin the package with 16 sites identified in Thimpu. Samtan Dolkar, BBS News. The opposition party, Druk Finsum Tokpa, is seeking clarifications from the government regarding the closure of the Centenary Farmers Market, CFM, in Thimpu recently. A letter was submitted to the Prime Minister's office on 29th September. According to the Druk Fensum Tsokpa, the decision impacted the whole chain of producers, sellers and consumers and not just the vendors operating from the facility. The party is suggesting reopening the market with compliance to the existing COVID-19 safety protocols. It states that businesses could resume with 50% of its usual capacity. As per the letter, the multi-level car parks where some vendors are relocated are not meant for such a purpose. The DPT is also questioning if the government plans to reopen the CFM once the COVID-19 situation improves. The Office of the Prime Minister acknowledged receiving the letter while its response is awaited. Shingzam, BBS News. COVID-19 pandemic brought home thousands of Bhutanese from many countries and most of them are jobless. But they came with a very important thing, experience. Taking this opportunity, the Labour Ministry is skilling returnees through various trainings. 34-year-old Ashok Kurma Beswa returned from Dubai in May. He worked there for more than four years as a sales associate. Today, he is one of the returnees who completed a course on entrepreneurship. 30 returnees shared business ideas. They did not want to waste their time waiting for normalcy to return. With no jobs, they resorted to Drukyalpo's relief kido. I couldn't find like anything as to what I should do because uh, as there, were, or there were already lots of unemployed people. So I, I went back to my home, uh, hometown 
During that period, like, uh, I was just doing a market research as to what I should be doing. Then I found out that uh, this poultry farm is going to be relevant in the future. Top six business ideas were selected. And his idea won him a cash prize of 70,000 yatam. Another returnee is Tashwangdi. He came from India. Tashi stayed back at the village and helped his parents until he got the training. Due to the pandemic, people have lost their jobs, so finding a new job is difficult. I've always wanted to start a business related to agriculture, but it was difficult as we need to have entrepreneurship skills. Now, after attending this training, I'm confident to bring my dream into a reality. Besides economic empowerment, the ministry wants to establish a positive attitude towards entrepreneurship. The focus this time is more on realistic business ideas which can be started sooner and easily. We are targeting to overseas returnees and let offs. Firstly, they have the skills, so they have come, up, uh, come back with a lot of skills and knowledge. And secondly, uh, they have uh, resources to start the business also. And I think uh, uh, it, was, it is timely for them to give such courses. The Labour Minister said the pandemic is the right time for Bhutanese returnees to start working here with the newly gained knowledge. I always have a glimmer of hope, and that hope is from your exposure to the outside world, your exposure to how businesses are run, organized, and how profits are made abroad. Meanwhile, Ashok has no plans to return to Dubai. He wants to make do with his poultry farm for now. Kiladim for BBS News. By March next year, the entire road network in Bumta town will have black-topped double-lane motorways. Thanks to the forthcoming youth, lead of hotel staff and employees of the tourism industry who joined the road construction project, the works are right on track. A bright story amidst the long-standing idea of youth apathy towards blue-collar jobs. 34-year-old Purnabadu Rai and his friends, who are all employees of Hotel Amankora in Puntang, are trying their hands on this new day job with little or no experience at all. They were mostly discharged on unpaid leave, like most of the staff in the hospitality sector across the country, but they are willing to get their hands dirty, making a living on their own now. The tourists may be, may be gone. With no tourists in the country now, we have become more or less jobless. His Majesty the King's relief Kidu is helping us buy ration for our family. However, we now have to pay full house rent starting this month, though we were given a 30% discount in the last three months. That's why we formed a team and joined the roadside construction work. It's been about two weeks on the road, and now they are getting a hang of it. It takes about a week to get used to this sort of work, but we are okay about it now. I think anyone can do it even as a full-time job. We can see lots of job opportunities in the construction sector. All those are doable, and there is no need to be embarrassed if they help us put food on the table. Like him, there are more than 80 others here who are mostly out of school and tourism sector employees who have lost their jobs due to the pandemic. There are works that we can do in the construction sites based on our capacity. We don't feel ashamed working here. We feel proud of ourselves instead. We're making a living out of it, and I feel that's what serving His Majesty the King and the government is all about. After graduating from Jimnam Indian College, uh, I didn't really seek for a government job, but then I got an opportunity to work under the CDCL. At recent times, we have seen that due to COVID-19, the Indian labor, uh, they have left the uh, hometown, but it is an opportunity for all the youths out here. It's better to serve our country and feel proud of what we are doing. 
some of them say if you are paid a decent wage a lot of them are willing to join the construction workforce in puntang the construction development corporation pays them daily wages ranging from 600 to 1000 yuan which they are happy about although it's very far from timbu the main reason for me being here is because whatever the minimum wages that we are being paid by the city sale company i feel is uh, is more than sufficient for us that will be enough to even meet the needs of our family back there at timbu if the government and then the employers if they could pay the laborers like us the decent amount of money i feel like the youth especially like me would definitely will definitely be motivated the corporation's road widening project in bumtang still requires more than 30 workers for now the ones that have joined the company are working hard building not just roads but their lives as well keep you BVS News, Pumtang. And this brings us to the end of this week's edition of our news magazine program. Until next edition, I'm Chiku, signing off only for now.